So this session is all about how to do effective seasonal marketing for your food enterprise. So I'm going to start with introducing um, our two special guests that we've, our three special guests from two special hubs that have come to join us today to talk about seasonal marketing. Um, and that's Sarah Rock and Rachel Forster from Tamar Valley Food Hubs. Um, I'll be sharing the slides after the session. So there's links here that you can click through to find out more um, about our guests. And also um, some of the resources in these slides will be available afterwards. I'll be sharing them in our um Oh, at the Open Food Network Facebook group. And also um, we'll be hearing from Kate Clement from Kent Food Hubs, um, Folkstone. And here's what we'll cover today. So this is gonna be a short intro session to seasonal marketing, where I'll cover what is seasonal marketing, why is it important, three tips to success, resources, and then Sarah and Rachel from Tamer Valley Food Hubs will talk a little bit around um, what they'll be doing. Uh, what they do for seasonal marketing. Sorry, distracted by the message. It just saw pop up on my screen there. <laughs> um, and then we'll be talking to Kate from Kent Food Hubs Folkstone um, about her experience with seasonal marketing. And then we'll have a little bit of time for an idea share among us all and potentially a Q&A as well. So we should have 15 minutes for that at the end. Um, although Sarah will be leaving us at about 20 past. So we've got five minutes of, of her before she goes, but we'll have an extra 10 minutes after that. So... I'm gonna get into it and just explain what is seasonal marketing. And I hope this doesn't seem too obvious, but sometimes it's good to start from um, a basic point. So seasonal marketing is identifying appropriate seasonal opportunities and making the most of them. So it's around creating marketing campaigns or sales activities, which are targeted to seasonal events throughout the year. So, why does it matter and why should we care about seasonal marketing? Why should, when we're doing a million other things, should we think about targeting our marketing um, around the seasonal events throughout the year? So the first thing that I wanna say about this is that it matters to your customers because your customers care about these seasonal events. And we know for sure that shopper activity is affected by seasons and seasonal events. And I'm sure all of you will have experienced a peak in sales around Christmas time, for example, to demonstrate to you that this, this is the case. And also seasonal, seasonal events and the seasons are relevant to your customers' lives and relevant content. And if you're, um, you know, relevant content or promotions or activity, it helps to, this helps to build a stronger, more loyal relationship with your audience because it shows them that you care about them um, and it shows them that you're resonating, you, you, you understand what they care about at the moment. And this helps to build customer loyalty, which means your customers will choose to buy from you again and again. And another reason to think about seasonal marketing and to target your activities around the seasons is because it's a really valuable opportunity to grow um, what you're doing and to grow your food hub. And um, that's because it helps you to identify appropriate seasonal opportunities, valuable opportunities for growth and to really make the most of them. So I'm just gonna go into a few tips from me from a marketing perspective. And the three things that I think about to get the most that you can from um, your seasonal marketing activities is to, first of all, to plan in advance because this will help you to get organized and avoid any last minute stress with your festive marketing and sales. It will also help you to sketch out the year ahead and decide what seasons or seasonal events you will focus on. Um, this will then help you. To, it's, it's a good practice to then set maybe calendar reminders or this could be a post-it note on your calendar or however you want to do this, but something to remind yourself of when you need to start thinking about certain dates. And this will help you to plan in, in advance and do more effective activities around these important events throughout the year. So an example of this would be Christmas um, and Christmas marketing ideally um, needs to kind of be in place by the end of October. And by planning in advance in this way, it means that you, by working in this way, another bonus is that it will also help you to prepare in advance for any um, seasonal increase in sales, for example. It's that um, the phrase that we just use, forewarned is forearmed. Um, and also it, will help you improve your seasonal performance because from this point, you can also manage your peaks and address any dips in sales. So you could look at times throughout the year, realize 
certain times around the year you have a peak in sales and other times you have lower sales. So by looking at the year in advance, you can pinpoint dates around these natural dips and decide in a way, decide how you might want to address them. So a way of doing this would be you could look at your sales performance over the last 12 months um, to help you track your national you know, natural seasonality. Um, where are your spikes and where are your dips? And then you can decide on an approach which works for your food hub. So you could plan something to boost sales during the dips, um, or if you don't, you know, maybe a product focus, um, a seasonal product focus in a time when you usually have quieter sales. Or you might want to um, pour your effort and energy into maximizing the peaks that you already have. But it just gives you a chance to start thinking strategically around the times of the year and what you're doing. Um, and it's best to try different things around this and see what works best with your customers and particularly for your for your own food, net, food enterprise. And the other tip here is to choose where to focus carefully. So there's so many important seasonal events um, throughout the year. And if you're trying to focus on everything, then you might feel a bit overwhelming. Um, so it's good to look at maybe look at the, the important dates throughout the year and choose which ones resonate most clearly with your hub. Um, so a good place to start with the major events throughout the year where we know that um, well, whether there's lots of research to show that it significantly impacts um, shoppers' behaviour, particularly around food. And that would be here's some cute icons to hopefully give you an idea of these big events, which I'm sure you all know is Christmas um, is the number one time normally for, for peaks in food sales followed by Halloween, actually is usually the second, um, particularly for online sales, the second um, event throughout the year where there's a spike in online sales in particular. And then you've got New Year, Valentine's Day. And so it's, there's so many more than this. You could think about things like back to school, which we're kind of at the tail end of. So um, you could think around um, perhaps things around um, promotions on produce that's good for lunch boxes, for example making things easier for parents um you could think about um I, I i personally have quite a negative response to this one but black friday and cyber monday what's a way that perhaps we could co-op this for something more positive um quite a few um enterprises are doing this and i think then even more seasonally things like summer weather and barbecues um easter spring cleaning um, you could look at times throughout the year for different uh, earth related days like Earth Day, Green Initiatives, um, Organic September, which we're in now. Um, and I just heard about this one. This is a new one for me, but there's also a sourdough September, which was a new one for me, but <laughs> could be very relevant to a number of um, a number of our food hubs. So here's a couple of resources for later that just will give you a list of awareness days and days of the year um, that some of them might resonate with you. You might want to use them and, and use these opportunities. And the other resource here is Canva. Um, I did a short session um, a couple of weeks ago on how to use Canva that I'll be sharing in, the, in our Facebook uh, group as well. And this is a really useful resource if you don't have much kind of time or energy to do much for this, like for seasonal marketing, or if marketing is very low priority for you, it could be as simple as, you know, like seasonalizing, I don't know if that's a word, your images where you can use Canvas like an online um, free to use design tool where you could use, you can use your image and overlay um, graphics that could represent the seasons. So there are really simple tools that are really quick to use where you could just add a slight seasonal touch to what you're doing. And it could be a starting point for then something bigger. So thank you. And I'm going to close this and come back to the group. Stop sharing. Great. And I raced through that a little bit because I wanted to make sure that we had a decent time for Q&A at the end with um, all of our lovely guests. And so I also want to kind of get out of the way and start the discussion. So. I want to start with Sarah and Rachel from Tamar Valley Food Hubs. And I've got some questions for you um, about your what you do for your seasonal marketing. So first of all, can you tell us a bit about your seasonal plans for the year? Oh wait, you're muted, you're muted. Yeah. yeah. Hello. 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 <laughs> So we've been, we've kind of 
slightly doing it in the wrong kind of timetable because we've skipped straight to Christmas this week, <laughs> missing out pumpkins and Halloween and bonfire night and all that kind of thing. Um, but and that that's down to us having our team meeting on Monday and the previous week and working out that we're going to be doing a full food hub delivery on Christmas Eve. And due to our um, increase in custom this year following COVID, that we need to be really prepared for it. Um, so we've started putting together Christmas ideas. <laughs> um, primarily, we're um, starting to create a Christmas brochure this year that's going to be an all-in-one pack for customers where they'll be able to find meat prices, order deadlines, um, information and ideas about Christmas cheese boards, recipes for a vegetarian Christmas, that kind of thing. So it'd be a really nice booklet. Um, well, it won't be a booklet. There'll be some printed sheets <laughs> clipped together um, that goes in every box from mid-November, possibly earlier, if we if we can manage to get our producers to to give yeah. us prices for things <laughs> and information and meat prices. So we started hassling them for that now. So we've got it in hand. Um, but we're, we're looking to launch our Christmas activities during what we know is our quietest fortnight of the year. One of our quietest fortnights falls in mid-November. And um, we found out that there are quietest weeks in November in the year um, through an OFM report, sales report, so we know our income drops then. So we're going to do, um, we're going to drop the Christmas brochure into those weeks just to get people thinking about it um, and ordering, um, but it's also going to be a free delivery fortnight that week that we're starting to build up to now. Um, so customers between now and free delivery fortnight will be getting more social media followers, um, will be running a campaign for people to nominate their community for the free delivery fortnight. Um, so we're kind of building momentum to then getting a brochure out is the idea. <laughs> nice, thank you. They sound like great plans. And I like how um, you have notice that there's a, a quieter couple of weeks in November and you've targeted the launch of this then so I think that's yeah really really awesome way to look at things and did you and you mentioned um as well by looking at a, an OFM report that you were able to see that so that's really that's really good awesome thank you so from how, now that you've got these kind of plans in place what have you is this your first year of being so organized or have you always kind of planned Christmas in advance? <laughs> There's certainly more organization this year, I think. Yeah. 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 And uh, I think following doing the marketing workshops and having the support earlier on in the year, it's really made us focus and think about it more strategically and have more timely planning mm -hmm. um, to think of it through a lot of different routes as well. So the social media to support the brochure, a campaign to support the brochure and newsletters and to make it all work together yeah. rather than it being a throw a social media post out because you've forgotten to do it <laughs> kind of thing and it's almost too late kind of thing, which is how previous years have worked a little bit. <laughs> it's a far more integrated approach, it isn't is. it? Yes. yes. I love it. <laughs> Great. Thank you. So do you have any, this is quite a long list of things, but do you have any tips, ideas, advice, or anecdotes <laughs> um, to share around organizing or doing seasonal um, promotional activities? Um, get Sarah in an elf hat. <laughs> Hugely successful. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, we did a little video last Christmas, a um, bit tongue in cheek, and I think um, that helped. Yeah. You've got to think of something different though this year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we also had a really nice um, Facebook post 
little section um, of we've got a grower who grows sprouts and we were counting down his sprouts yeah. to kind of encourage people to make sure they get them ordered. <laughs> so I think it started off with Kendall's got a hundred sprout stalks left. Yeah. So it went through it and then it counted down to 15 and he had none left for his own Christmas dinner in the end. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, lo I love these really creative ideas and just a, a bit of background about the um, Sarah and Alphat uh, video. It was it was this really, really awesome Facebook post with Sarah um, reading a beautiful poem that Rachel had written by Rachel. Yeah, <laughs> written by Rachel. And um, but sitting, you know, like kind of like telling a Christmas story in an, in an Alphat. And yeah, it was just such a like it was such a good post that really kind of helped to bring about this like feeling of Christmas, but also really displaying the the personality and the energy behind Tamar Valley Food Hubs. And it, se it seemed to perform really effectively. I noticed you got a really great response from it. And so this is like another thing to think about when you're thinking about seasonal marketing, you can kind of think out of the box of different creative ideas. And especially if you're thinking in advance, you can sit and brainstorm as a team and just take that time, even if it's just half an hour, um, come together and what what creative ideas can we do this Christmas? And yeah, it's it's a way of kind of putting putting more heads together to come up with these ideas. And then you've got this beautiful kind of combo effort at creating a really awesome post that um cust your that yeah customers can really resonate with. So I really enjoyed that personally as well. So and I like the sprouts the sprouts idea. That's such a good one. So awesome. So. What do you feel, so now you're kind of looking at Christmas in advance, what do you feel, um, you know, maybe from here on outwards, it might be then looking at different kind of chunks of seasonality throughout the year. What do you feel are the benefits of almost like nodding to the seasons as a, as a, as a, yeah, as a food enterprise? Well, I think it's mainly what we're all about is about seasonality. So, you know, actually, you know, at the moment, we're all about apples and apple pressing. And in the spring, we talk a lot about daffodils because we're a big daffodil growing area. And it just sort of like makes people think about what they're eating more. And that sort of um, the availability of the seasonal produce on our food hub is what we we focus on all the time. Mm. I think I think this year they were going to we do need to make that link more to the, linking the seasonal hero products that we chatted about before to the events of the year, don't we? And yeah. Link it to bonfire night, link it to Halloween kind of thing. So mm -hmm. yeah. rather than standalone, this is what's in season. So. Hmm. Yeah, and I think that's a really lovely um, point, Sarah, that you know can like it's almost as well like being connect like with your kind of marketing activity being connected to the seasons as well it's like showing your customers what you're about as a as a food enterprise which is connecting people more to the seasons and what foods in season when and what yeah so i think that's really really lovely and i was just thinking about last year when you have your um like your the oranges in season for your spanish oranges in in january and so it's also like when you're thinking about the seasons this opportunity to really hero certain products which or produce which is like also a really nice thing to give that that produce um a bit of a limelight moment and then also to help with sales and connect it to the season so yeah thank you so just, what do you think? just Sorry. on the um oranges note um we're including a um the back page of the christmas um booklets going to be about the new year so hopefully fruit is coming and you'll be able to order it from Christmas. Um, and also um, mid-January is also our lowest fortnight. So um, we're also doing another free delivery fortnight then. So it's the Christmas brochure we're using to promote the new year kind of activities as well. Hmm. Nice. Mm. And so with the Christmas brochure, did you find anything challenging in the, in the production when you're kind of pulling in? For example, you mentioned something about getting the prices from producers. Do you feel like it's quite a lot to get all of the points together to, to create something? Yeah, I mean, it's Christmas hampers change every year, prices change mm -hmm. every year. So we're just getting everything ready for it just to drop in the prices and changes, really. Yeah. So. 
I guess that's one um, of the benefits. There's a crossword in it too. <laughs> yeah. What, what in it too, sorry? A Christmas crossword. Awesome. Just so people will come back to it. Yeah. Hopefully. But, you know, it'll be something you can put down and then come back to because it's a point of interest. Yeah, nice. Awesome. And I think um, also just have having the time to do the brochure and also find out all the prices and get everything ready. This is another good kind of tip of getting prepared early because that gives you time to then wait for producers to send you their prices, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, awesome. So is there anything, what are you, apart from, we've talked quite a lot about what you're doing for Christmas, which is great. Thank you. Is there anything next year that you think you might, cap, like, don't like, even like to use the capsize, but up, that you might make the most of so any seasonal kind of times or events next year that you're excited to make a bit more of um, i think definitely valentine's kind of came and went and we didn't do much for it just because we had other focuses at that time but there's certainly more we can do around flowers and special dinners and perhaps a special dinner offer um potentially um so, yeah, we'll start thinking about that as soon as we get back, I think. After we um, know one of our producers um, who makes pasties, very popular down here in Cornwall, um, she um, declined to tell us that they were going to make heart-shaped pasties for Valentine's. So we were just no. too late to get them onto yeah. the system and all that sort of thing. So... We'll be more on it with um, heart-shaped pasties this year. Next year. Next year. <laughs> well, we're, um, we're, we're looking to set up more of a kind of regular producer newsletter as well, yeah. just for them. Um, so all of the niggles we have <laughs> about, you know, getting prices to us or missing out on heart-shaped pasties, mm. it's kind of a reminder for them to let us know what's coming soon or what they're planning so we can chase yeah. them up about it in in a timely fashion <laughs> and, um, and tech issues with the software, how they can mm. resolve them, hopefully themselves by looking at a help video or, or fact sheet or something. So, mm. so yeah, it's also hoping that will, those kind of issues will then feed into our seasonal mm. marketing mm. more successfully, I think. Yeah. So I think that's really interesting saying that, you know, they had this amazing, Valentine offering of the heart shaped pasties, but then missing out on it. But then at least then next year, you know that that's an option. So I think also with seasonal marketing, it's kind of it can be like an iterative process, like gradually, yeah, like as time goes by, you remember, and you might do things one year, and then next year you've got then like like everything you learned from the year before to build on and to tweak and change and things that you might have missed. So it's it's also being really kind of like yeah, noticing these things and being rather than being disappointed that you might have missed out, it's like next year we now know about the heart-shaped pasties. <laughs> we will have them. And I also love that you've now put it in a process where because you're creating the producer newsletter, that then means you've got this prompt. Um, is it every month? Yeah. Um, in theory, it will be, yeah. Cool, but there's this prompt then to reach out to your producers in advance and find out what's, you know, like there's that kind of extra encouragement or a kind of timetable thing that will help them to tell you if there's anything that's relevant for, for what's going on. So I think that's really awesome and a really useful thing to be doing. Great, thank you. So any extra, kind, any final anecdotes or tips or anything about cracking or getting started with targeted seasonal marketing? Um, something that's slightly um, related is uh, there's an annual event in Plymouth called Always Apples that's been cancelled this year. Um, and we always go along with a full produce store to go and promote the food hub. And that's not happening this year. So um, they're doing some online activities to take the festival virtually um this this um event so we're going to offer free delivery to people who would have attended the event so we're mm. going to have an always apples free delivery option for plymouth for the week that it would have taken place and we're going to support that with um i was thinking a video in our community orchard locally just to kind of announce it to put on our um, facebook page and then um they'll be doing a lot of um, social shares of that and our posts 
um, through their network. So it's just quite a nice one-off seasonal event that hasn't been able to happen this year that we're looking at in a different way to try and get some new custom stuff. Great. That's really, that's actually, that's also a really um, good point that you brought up there that seasonal marketing doesn't necessarily just have to be about the kind of the big events like Christmas and Halloween and things like that, that everyone are taking part in, but it's also things that are happening in your community as well. And it's, there's something about being responsive to what's going on in your community. It's thinking about who your customers are and what do they care about? What might they be missing this year through the tough times that we're all going through? Um, what might be missing? And having that, being able to kind of respond to that is a, is really effective seasonal marketing. So then it helps build up this kind of customer connection and customer loyalty. And in this case, a really um, potentially positive partnership. Um, so yeah, that's really, thanks for sharing that. That's really useful. Awesome. So we're doing really well for time. So, um, which is great because sometimes I've run on these. So thank you. And I'm now going to thank you so much for all of um, the information that you shared. Um, there's been some really great points there that I'm sure are really valuable and useful. So thanks for that. And now I'm going to move on to Kate from Kent Food Hubs Folkestone. Hello. Hey, and thanks so much for joining and contributing your experience to the to the group. And I, one of the things I was really hoping you talk to talk about today was your experience of um, first of all of planning for back to school because I know you had some plans in place for how to yeah. make the most of the opportunity of what back to school meant for parents and how to make things easy for your customers who are parents for example by helping them with things they might have in their lunchbox their kids lunch boxes and I know you had a couple of hiccups but you're also doing some things so I was hoping you could tell us a little bit about um, your process with that and what happened and what you learned and yeah any any hints or tips or learnings from that. Great. Yeah, I mean, basically, we're, we're quite a new hub. So we've only been running since February. So um, we kind of we, we just caught pre COVID and then we went boom. So um, we're still really adjusting to who who our customers are. And one things like the the going back to school, um, you know, that really helps. It's something that everybody's doing. And we've noticed that a lot of our, our customers were um, buying more of kind of like the not necessarily the family items um and so we were talking to them you know when they came to pick up because we pick up and deliver um and we've got cakes and we've got lovely sourdough bread but we weren't we didn't have things like the um just like an everyday loaf or, or a tray bake or flapjacks um and things like that so we, we went through and we started really having a look at what what we do have um, so we've got some really nice pasta sauces, which are really quick and easy. Um, we spoke to our sausage producer. He's put a, a special offer on, on his sausages, um, three for a tenner, um, the same as he does in his market. And we've now got a range coming on in the next couple of weeks of um, sort of family treats, really, but healthy ones, things that go on and, and actually looking at getting um, packed, yeah, packed lunch, packed lunch things on, on there. It's... Um, We'd all been out of out of school and out of the system for so so long, um, and it was it was something that we'd we'd missed um, going back to school. Packed lunches, we we had plenty of stuff for meals, plenty of stuff for treats, but nothing that was just easy, economical, and or very little. Um, and we've continued to expand that. So by talking to the producers, we've now got um, pizza bases on. Um, we've got new producers coming on. We've got crisps coming on. And we've just um, nice healthy crisps, and we've just um, got uh, what we've called on hand essentials. So we've got things like um, aquafaba, just just things to make everybody's um, store cupboard um, easier to use, sort of like tinned pulses and things like that, but all really ethically sourced, obviously, um, to make to make the shopping a bit quicker and easier because now everybody's back at school and work, and we're all sort of struggling a little bit with with juggling. Um, yeah, we just wanted to make it easier for everybody. So I think that's a really nice that you thing that you pointed out there that your kind of inspiration to create a back to school range was from thinking about what your customers are going through and wanting to make their lives easier. So yeah, so I thought I think that's a really nice kind of brings it back to the reason for doing kind of seasonal marketing is really to yeah thinking about your customers what do they care about at the moment what's on their minds what they, might they be finding difficult etc so yeah and then as with covid with children ha like 
um, having to take lunch boxes to school that suddenly then means that parents then have to think about what to make for lunch boxes and then also cooking the dinners in the evenings etc so I think that's a really great starting point to come from with any marketing activity is from your customers what's what's going on for them what do they care about at the moment what might challenges that they're facing so Kate what um did you find any I, I remember you were saying that you had you were trying to get kind of a range for um lunch boxes so kind of for example flapjacks and cakes and and also then with back to school having offers for easy to make meals in the evenings what were the main challenges that you came up against when you were trying to organize these plans um our, our producers really in the nicest way um because it's really hard to uh, you know the, the producers that we have on board they're, they're all they're all great they're all wonderful but they it's it's been very tailored to families because obviously there was the everybody was making their own sourdough and making their own cakes and it was actually trying to to come back from that kind of not luxury exactly but the, the higher end things you know instead of making a cake for a whole family which you know they're, they're they sell really well with us um but you can't put a whole slice of cake in a packed lunch realistically without making a big mess um and with the veg boxes actually making sure that we we had plenty of loose fruit um and with our dried goods actually really highlighting for people what to do with them so posting simple recipes for flapjacks brownies um and including those things on the email as well the weekly email um actually really focusing on it look at what you can do look at what you can use and highlighting actually that we can still keep in with the um with the whole ethos of what we've been doing that the biggest problem is of course when you know as soon as school hit everybody rushed back to buy their you know their, their fruit bars and their oat bars wrapped in plastic and it was actually trying to keep that spirit of you can make them they're easy we've got the ingredients you don't have to change your shopping habits because we noticed although we didn't lose customers the um the order the the value of the orders was going down a little bit um where people were clearly topping up with with easy things to pop in a lunchbox so it was trying to kind of get round that and stick with the whole ethos of you can still shop in the way you've been shopping you've made this change you know since covid hit since february when you know when you you started with us um you don't need to actually relinquish it and go back now and that was quite a challenge and we had to work yeah quite hard to sort of to stop people from our veg boxes stayed the same everybody was buying the veg boxes and there was you know sort of like a few treats and things like that but it was the whole the easy aspect the family the value that you know it's so easy to nip into as there and buy a you know a packet of hobnobs or something and then while you're in there and something catches your eye everything's on offer and, and it was how to compete with that um without being dismissive of the supermarkets because we always try and keep it really positive you know look, look what we're doing not don't go there um and actually we that we there was a slight shortfall for about sort of maybe three weeks and we've really really picked back up again people are adjusting they are starting to cook they are starting to buy those things and we're gradually increasing so things like you know pizza friday quick easy meal we've got your pizza base we've got the sauce we've got vegan cheese even you know we've got all these things you, you can make it and it's a family thing to do so really focusing on on the family because because our well the feedback that we've had is people were very stressed they were going back and they wanted things to be easy and uncomplicated um but they were still missing the home cooked meal the things that they've been doing those those things that they've had time to do during lockdown hmm. yeah and i think that's that's I mean, one of the really wonderful um, things that I felt about what everything that you're doing, it's just so responsive to what is happening for your for your customers, which is such a good way to approach anything. So, you know, a lot of what you're saying there is talking about what your customers might be going through and even also about for thinking about, create, have, you know, Pizza Fridays and what that might mean for a family. And I think that's a really like thinking about where your customers are and what and creating moments for them. And I think that's also... Yeah, with connection to seasonal marketing, that's ways that you can kind of communicate with your customers and connect with them about where they are, is, is thinking about these things. So awesome, thank you so much. I've got a couple of other questions. And from your experience with this, and I appreciate that you're a new, a fairly new startup hub, um, but 
do you have any kind of tips or any ideas or any advice to share around creating these kind of plans or promotions around seasonal events or changes in the seasons or for example in your case back to school I mean just basically look at what what the supermarkets are doing um and 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 be aware I mean Christmas you know to sort of change the subject slightly it's the Christmas ranges are already out Morrison's all days they're already there people they, they you can't buy them until mid-November but they have published their Christmas ranges the same with going back to school looking at the offers looking at the deals being we've we've done some um, price comparison work so actually looking to see um what what we can do to sort of like keep in line with that I mean obviously we can't keep in in line with like the really really kind of like budget shops but actually making it really clear what the distinction is you know this is handmade this is homemade this is locally grown this is this is something you know like one thing we did focus on was you know like you might not be able to get in from school and cook a really nice I think one of my posts was um, on a Wednesday which is why I'm sitting in my car because I I have my daughter is in an aerial class in a building behind me and then I have to pick her up drop her friend off and, and get to school uh, to pick up my my son but I know when I get home I can open a jar Fran and Jack they're from Italy um, they've made a really nice bolognese sauce that I'll pour over some of their homemade pasta and you've got none of the mum guilt that's you know it's kind of I can't remember what I how I phrased it but something about you know you can still feel smug about <laughs> the children getting a home cooked meal um, and, and then they've got apple crumble for pudding. And it's it's so easy, but it's it's been very hard. A lot of the customers have said that they found it quite hard. They've had so much time with their children. So go back to being time poor is really, really hard for, for, like, for them. So it's kind of really showing people that you can still have that care. You might not have to cook it yourself, but it's it's there and it's still really ethically produced. And you can still you still kind of have have that right across the board. Um and also, yeah, very similarly to what, what you guys said, working really, really closely with your producers um, and making sure that you know what they're doing as well, because they're not always the most communicative. You know, they're very busy. They're doing their own thing. They've got all the same struggles that we do. Um, so it is quite disheartening sometimes to see that they're doing something amazing and you're not in on it. So it's kind of really fostering those relationships Um and and working closely with them we've we've had some great collaborations here so we've got our kimchi makers have teamed up with um one of our, our live plant sellers so he had it some surplus beetroot so that they've made rebel farmer beetroot kimchi and it's really nice for the customers to kind of see that it's it's not just you know it all of us we've all got the same values you know like we all know each other we are a food community like all together um and we we try and reinforce that as much as possible um so it's you know lots lots of faces lots of personal sort of like anecdotes lots of um information about how we're working together and our we're very very lucky our customers are fantastic you know they they send us quite a lot of stuff um they always give us brilliant feedback so yeah just talk talk to your customers and see what they're doing they, a lot of the things that we've got um we're having a separate christmas cycle um, for example, we've got dog treats coming on. So there's a, a local lady that makes vegan dog treats from sweet potatoes. And we got that from a customer. It's her neighbor. And, and she was talking to us. She said, oh, if you, you know, if you're doing one, do you think you might be interested? And actually constantly asking them for their feedback because they're already out there at all the farm shops and the butchers and traveling to get everything. Um, and it's another customer, her auntie's in-law somewhere along the line is the lady that, that's going to be supplying our Christmas turkeys. And it's not somebody that we'd, we'd sourced. Um, so it's, yeah, just making the most of your community really is the most valuable asset that we've we've had so far. They've been fantastic. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kate. That was, yeah, that's really, really amazing information and really, yeah, really wonderful insight into, into what you're doing um, in Folkestone. So thanks for that. And we're also like doing really well for time. So it's 10 past five. So we've got 10 minutes um, for questions with all of us here. So does anyone, so if you don't wanna speak, it's totally fine. You can write a question in the chat box, which is in the far left corner of your screen. Um, you just click on the speech bubble and type in your question. But also please um, unmute and just throw your questions in if you've got any questions for me or for um, Sarah and Rachel or Kate. I've got a question about mar marketing specific items. 
So sometimes I'll um, say, for example, if I'm promoting a specific producer or a specific item, I can't find a way of like linking specifically to that. If I'm trying to get like a smooth customer journey, and I think if I put something like at the, the bottom of like a, a Mailchimp campaign saying like featured this week, this producer, and then I want a link at the bottom for like a specific item, it's just going straight to my shop, which is showing everything that I have for sale. And that's like, that really interrupts the customer journey. How do you get around that? Hmm, I see what you mean. So that would be um, the link would then go to your whole OFN shop page as opposed to one product page, which would be that yeah. great journey. Um, I'm fairly siloed in marketing at the OFN, but I'm wondering hey. if anyone, Louise. Yeah. <laughs> um, so glad you're here. Um, can you help with this, this question? I'm afraid there isn't a solution to this. I, I do know that it is um, not an issue, but it, 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 it isn't possible to link to a particular item at the moment. Um, I think it's something that our development team are working on. And all I can say is that I know that I think next week or the week after the whole shopping experience is really going to change. And so it might be part of that um, change. And if it's not, then um, I can find out if it's what stage it's at in the pipeline. I mean, I think um, everyone who uses OFN has to be aware, what well, is aware anyway, um, that we have like a delivery train and um, things have to be prioritized across the global community. So things can be quite slow because it's open source, but I know it's definitely on there somewhere. I don't know. I know that's not really what you, the answer you wanted to hear. Um, the other thing that, I don't know, I'm just thinking of practical ways around it. What you could do that is if you were doing a um, highlighting a particular product or producer for the week, you could use um, your product categories um, to sort of manipulate your shop front. So you could artificially um, move them all into a product category, which you don't normally use, say, um, I think there's one called special offers or something like that. And then um, it, it, you can use, I think it's under um, shop front preferences on your enterprise settings. You can order your product categories. So then if you put all of those highlighted products to the top of your list, then they would be the ones that the customer saw when they first um, hit your shop. Um, I, I don't know whether that helps at all or... Um, really good. So is that under shop front? categories if you say yeah you'd have to have um permission from your permission uh, from your producers to be able to edit their products uh because you'd need to go into their products edit and move um move the category so if it was say like um i don't know a bar of chocolate and it was under tasty treats and you wanted to move it highlight that bar of chocolate the week and put it at the top and put it under a special pro um special offers I'd have to have a look at what the product categories are but I'm sure you probably don't use them all um, and then you can um, press save and then go to en um, your hub enterprise go to um, settings um, soft pre shop preferences and then you can uh, there's a setting there where you can put in the order okay so that, that sounds good Awesome, thanks Louise. Um, so do we have any other questions or comments or does anyone want to share their own experience with things that they've tried um, around seasonal marketing? Okay, so we've got a few more minutes for questions before Sarah has to leave. So I'm going to ask um, you guys some more questions. And hmm, I wish I'd thought of some more questions in advance now. <laughs> uh, um, or actually, Sarah, you're quite lucky that I didn't have the that I don't have the um, the the elf poem video because I might have shown that in this space instead. But, um, 
Kay, can I ask a question of Sarah? Yeah, sure, please. Um, I know you're really interested in uh, promoting your heart pasties um, next <laughs> Valentine's. And um, I worked for a small business for a little while and um, I found that trying to promote Valentine's is really difficult because you have to think um, who's going to buy the product. It's a bit like... Um, Father's Day, or one, let me get this right. If you're doing like an anniversary gift, it's usually the woman who does the shopping. And I know this is really sexist, but it tends to be that way around. So you have to, um, the product needs to be something that the woman would buy for the man. You'd get better results that way than promoting something that the man would buy for the woman. I don't know. And the other thing that I was thinking about with Valentine's is, and this is again, it's not always sex set, um, based on men and women, but there's always that last minute rush. And um, I wondered, I suppose it depends on the day of the week, it will fall on and when your order cycle ends, because I, I wonder whether you have any evidence, anyone of um, like, if Valentine's is on a Tuesday and your order cycle or your collection point is always on is on a Monday, uh, whether that year you had um, higher sales than if you know there was a bigger gap between the two. I think the beauty of the um, heart shaped pasty is that they are unbaked and frozen. Of course, whoever bought them in the cut, the relationship would need to hide them at the bottom of the freezer. <laughs> Um, and they post them. And, and, but they do also post them as well. We could um, post baked heart-shaped pasties, I suppose. Um, but then we have the benefit of a, a kitchen, <laughs> which a lot of hubs don't, I know. Um, but, yeah, I, I take your point, Louise. It's sort of like the only way, really, I suppose, with the pasties is, like, to promote it as your Valentine's dinner at home. Well, Sarah, you're going to be quits in this fe next February then, because I think uh, we've been cold six months at home. So Valentine's dinners on February will be at home for everyone. So there we go. Yeah, afraid so. Cool. Thanks for your question, Louise. So, sorry, it's um, five. So I remember you said when we started that that you had um, another place to be. So just the right. So thank you so much for joining and for sharing your experiences. And um, we're gonna stick around for another 10 minutes of questions. If anyone else has any or questions, experience, ideas, share, whatever you wanna do in this space. But yeah, thanks Sarah, really appreciate it. That's okay. It's, um, I, I have to book, you have to book nowadays for everything. So I've got a booked swim. Awesome, <laughs> enjoy it. <laughs> nice seeing you. Bye. Bye. Awesome. So does anyone else have anything else to discuss or share into the space around plans for seasonal marketing, questions, ideas, um, anything you want to help with? Um, yeah, I'm going to leave it open. We have to about the silence, but I'm going to leave it there for a little bit and see who wants to join in. I can't remember who, who Sarah or Kate talked about hampers, and I just wondered whether it was that was something the producers had done or whether that was something you put together because I know I think Kate I think I got the idea from you about doing a, a barbecue bundle earlier on this year and it was like and it sort of did okay it sold a few of them but it was it was kind of a bit of a hassle just trying to get the the producers sort of forgot to invoice because it hadn't come through the normal way and and then they did had forgotten that I'd put the barbecue bundle out so they didn't have enough steaks and things like that so I don't know if, if you I don't know if, you, if you're doing hampers for Christmas, whether you're, you found a, a different way of doing that or do you just do it as your own product and you sort of buy the stuff off the, off the producers? Um, it was our Ashford hub that actually did barbecue hampers and um, they had exactly the same problems, people forgetting to put the extra, the extra produce in and, and things like that. Um, so for Christmas, we're actually asking our producers to put together hampers um, so rather than have a hamper which relies on um, several different producers 
So basically the order will come through to us as one order and then we have to ask everybody for those individual components. So for Christmas, we're actually asking people if they will put together a hamper and if they're going to collaborate on a hamper, actually to provide us with the finished hamper. Um, so it's their responsibility to work together. So we're sort of encouraging them to only work in two. So one of our um, producers at the moment, she makes these beautiful biscuits and she is working with one of our tea sommeliers to make a lovely tea and biscuits hamper. And that actually she sells at the moment. Um, but they work on several other projects together. Um, they both supply some of the same coffee houses and, and things like that. So it's just fostering those um, those collaborations and then kind of handing back some of that responsibility because it was it was I we didn't actually do the barbecue hampers at the Folkestone Hub, but I also work sort of moonlight at the Ashford Hub sometimes. And it was such a tremendous amount of work and chasing and putting them all together. And it only took one one bit to be missing. And we were delivering bits the next day or the evening or on one memorable occasion, none of the buns arrived. And so the lovely guys at the bakers, um, I think they drove an hour and 20 minutes to deliver four buns the following day. <laughs> so, I mean, it was lovely, but I think it was... Um, I think it really needs to be kept, the, the hampers are great, but kept smaller, not so many people involved and actually have the finished article arrive to us to send out as opposed to expecting us to pack it. There was um, a lot of extra work involved and not a lot of, of benefit really, but they were a great idea. We do Christmas hampers and yeah, I think I think you're right. It can be a real hassle if you're dependent on other people for them. So we we do it purely from dry stock items, um, so biscuits and jams, and our own apple juice, honey, all things in jars and and packets that um, we either ask a producer for say ten jars on sale or return that we can return to them after Christmas if we haven't used them in hampers. Um, but we do collate them and pack them ourselves. But um, we have quite an early cut-off date for people to order them. So we're not doing them on Christmas Eve. And um, we've also tried posting them, uh, which has worked quite well um, for sales of hampers. So people can order a relative up north, um, a lovely Cornish hamper. Um, and we do the postage at cost. So it's a bit of an attractive option as well. And um, we sent them through, I think, my Herbies or something last year. And um, oh, yeah, it. it's worked right. And we're, and um, if it's a if it's a regular customer, um, quite often, like the customer's given us a Christmas card to include in it, um, which is nice as well. So we can kind of personalise it a bit. So. Yeah, that's well, it's quite a good idea. Actually, think about because I know people do to buy presents you know we've had you know i've had people coming in and they bought extras because they're going away the following week and they want to take some gifts with them actually have you done any marketing around or has anybody done any marketing around presents for people because you'd want to do that much earlier wouldn't you what you'd want people would be buying them much earlier be early december or something i suppose for, for those we've done, to we've, done a, we've done a hamper specific little folded A4 sh sheet with photos um, before. It's quite a happy set up. We did photos of every individual hamper and set it up with a board behind it so it didn't have our white board on the shelves in the back of the photos, that kind of thing. So it's a bit hassly, but once you've got the photos, you can use them again each year and it was quite a good, good thing to do. Awesome. So we've got five minutes left, but I feel like we've covered quite a lot in this session. And thanks so much for everyone who's, who's contributed ideas and questions. And it's great that we can all learn from each other in this way. So thanks for, thanks for participating and taking part. And if, is there anything else, any other questions or anything to add um, before, we, before we finish for the day? I think it would be really nice to have another one because like I, I love that like the postage and that, that hadn't even occurred to us at all 
so like maybe to have another one like in a month because we're, we're actually setting ours up next month so if we could do like another seasonal one to help us iron out any wrinkles um, when we're in it if that makes sense because I think I haven't thought of so many things and I know I'm going to because it's going to be our mm. first one as we as they come up I think another one of these would be really useful when we're actually sort of in October which is sounds ridiculous saying Christmas season but it is isn't it I suppose um, yeah would that be possible yeah so maybe we could do a Christmas specific one so there's a little bit about the plan of we've kind of shifted a few a bit of the plan of what we're doing with these webinars and once a month we'll be doing um a webinar on a theme that will change every month that will be pulling in um you guys yeah so talking to different hubs to try to share different skills and experience about different topics each time um we'll also so yeah so i think a nice one about christmas christmas marketing in october would be good um there's some more to share about here we'll also be doing once a month kind of marketing specific webinars we're also going to start doing meet the team webinars with the and by meet the team um it'll be the ofn team but then also wider the wider team within the ofn meaning the hubs as well so we'll be yeah using our kind of collective expertise and experience to to yeah to share skills and experiences to help us all thrive so that's Bit of a plan for the future we're also going to be doing q a sessions as well probably once a month so there's a bit of a different program of webinars coming um and it's still in kind of yeah it's still in planning as you can probably tell by my explaining it in a bit of a waffly way <laughs> um but what we want is much more kind of collaboration and much more kind of idea sharing because you know when you're kind of just you know like for example a week in the life of type um want like a session with like a hub talking about a week in the life of their hub because you might be just doing your kind of your general day-to-day -day and you might not think about all the things that you do and also the way that you might use the OFN software for example or all of the different things that you might really not think about that might be really useful for another hub that didn't know that that capability existed or hadn't thought about things that way so we're trying to think of how yeah, what well, we're thinking at the moment of how to use these sessions to, to share more of this information and create a really valuable resource for us all to, yeah, to use and grow and thrive and do good. So I want to come on that, but that's a really nice idea, Kate. So thanks for that. And I think with Christmas coming up, obviously that's a big one for everybody. So I think a, a Christmas focus session where maybe we're sharing ideas and what we're doing, but also with, yeah, with some, some extra useful things in there too. Awesome. And next week, um, the webinar will be all around everything uh, customer retention marketing. So all about how to develop strong relationships with your customers. Also, everything around customer surveys, how to do a great customer survey, things to think about what you can then use your customers, why you would want to do a customer survey and what you can then use it for. And just everything around understanding your customers and generating more customer loyalty and better customer relationships in the long run. So that'll be this time next week. And that will just be a session hosted by me with a QA and a at the end. So it won't be such a kind of team effort, but then we'll have another session like this um, with topics to follow um, next month. And we'll also have a meet the team session coming up as well at the beginning of, of next month. So lots of different things happening here. And yeah, so coming up to half five and just want to say thanks everyone for coming and for sharing and for helping to co-create this space and I'm personally really excited to see how these sessions grow and how we can yeah all work together as a community for yeah for the greater good <laughs> so thanks everyone and I'm going to sign off and um, I'm going to share this video and also the slides for my little mini presentation with the links on it in our Facebook group. And um, it's also got my email on there. If anyone has any other questions or wants to talk to me personally about anything, wants it, yeah, then I'm available and here to help. So awesome. Thanks everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Bye everyone.